Let us look at some examples of using trigonometric substitution to solve integrals. So let's look at the first very straightforward example, the integral of the root of 1 minus x squared. Now we saw in the previous video that the substitution we're going to use is we're going to say let x be equal, our value of a is 1, so just 1 sine theta. And we have to say where theta comes from because you'll see that we want sine inverse to exist. So theta is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. All right, if that's x, now remember we're making a substitution in integrals, so we need to substitute dx as well. So dx is then cos theta d theta. We can make our substitution immediately. So that's the integral of the square root of minus sine squared theta times dx, which is now cos theta d theta. All right, now the root of 1 minus sine squared x is the absolute value. Well, let's put another step in there. That's the root of cos squared theta times cos theta d theta. Now, we know the root of cos squared theta is the absolute value of cos theta. But we know that the absolute value of cos theta is simply cos theta. Why? Since theta comes from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So it's strategically chosen to help us with that. So this is the same as the integral of cos theta times cos theta, which gives me cos squared theta d theta. So all of a sudden, we've reduced it to something that we are familiar with. Now, in the section on trigonometric integrals, we looked at how to deal with this one. We're going to use that double angle formula identity, and we've got that as a half, the same as a half times 1 plus cos 2 theta d theta. All right, so... When we integrate that, we can keep the half out. We've got theta plus the antiderivative of cos of 2 theta is sine. It's a half sine 2 theta plus c. So that's a half theta plus a quarter sine 2 theta plus c. But we are not finished. We need to get this back into the terms of x, because our original question was in x, so we need to get this back into terms of x. So, let's see. Theta, I know, is just sine of theta. x is equal to 1 sine theta. So, theta is arc sine of x. If I had to sketch this, sine of theta is x over 1. So, this, that side would be 1 minus x squared. So I've got theta, but here I've got a sine 2 theta. Now 2 theta is not in this, and I can't just double theta in that triangle. So that's the same as a half theta plus sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta, which would make it a half, because a quarter times 2 is a half, sine theta cos theta plus c. Now I can change it all back into terms of x, so excuse me for squashing this in, but that's a half theta, which is arc sine x, plus a half sine theta, sine theta I know is x, cos theta from this triangle is a over s, so cos is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, so that's the root of 1 minus x squared plus c. And there we've simplified this integral by making it a bit more complicated, but in eventually reducing it to something we are familiar with. All right. Now the next in example, very similar. We just have a 25 rather than a 1. So let's just see how to deal with that. If I say let x be equal to 5 sine theta in this case, and theta is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, I know arc sine will exist and cos of theta will be positive. dx is then 5 cos theta d theta. And it's going to be a similar process. So this one's going to go a bit faster. So that's the integral of the root of 25 minus 25 sine squared theta. And dx is 5 cos theta d theta. 
So we know that's the integral of 5 times the absolute value of cos x, but we know the absolute value of cos theta is simply the positive cos theta, since theta was chosen from that interval. So this gives me 5 times cos squared theta, d theta, similarly to the previous one. So that is 5 times, we're going to use the same identity, a half, 1 plus cos 2 theta, d theta. So that is 5 over 2 times theta. I've missed a 5 here. 5 cos theta, so this is 25, 25, 25, apologies. So theta plus a half sine 2 theta plus c, so that's 25 over 2 theta plus 25 over 4 sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta, so it'll be 25 over 2 sine theta cos theta plus c. So we know sine theta is x over 5 in a right angle triangle. If that's theta, it's x over 5. So this side will be 25 minus x squared. So theta is arc sine or sine inverse of x over 5. Sine theta is x over 5. And cos theta is the square root of 25 minus x squared over 5 plus c. Now you can take that one step further by simplifying all the numbers on the second term. But that is giving you a good idea of what we're working with. So let's look at this type. This one looks a little bit different. But we've got under the root a 1 plus x squared. So that is of the form where we substitute x equal to tan theta. Again, my a value is 1. So I'm going to say let x be tan theta. And theta is then between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So dx is then derivative of tan is 6 squared theta d theta. So let's take a look if we do the substitution. This is the integral of 1 over x squared is tan squared theta times the square root of 1 plus tan squared theta times d theta, which is 6 squared, or dx 6 squared theta d theta. All right, there's a lot happening here, so let's just tidy it up. We've got 6 squared theta over tan squared theta times 1 plus tan squared theta is 6 squared theta, and we know the absolute value, the root of 6 squared is the absolute value of 6 of theta, and we know the absolute value of 6 of theta is just 6 of theta, because theta comes out of minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, and 6 is positive there. So we've got that, so it's tan theta times 6 theta d theta. Okay. Now, let's see where that gets us. One of the 6 cancelled uh, cancels out. If in doubt, I change everything to sine of cos, so we'll have a 1 sec left there, so it's 1 over cos theta. Then we've got a tan squared, 1 over tan squared, so that's cos squared theta over sine squared theta, d theta. So that gives me the integral of cos of theta over sine squared theta. And we've seen how to deal with that. I will do that on the next page. We'll come back to this page because we'll need a lot of information here. So we've got the integral of cos of theta over sine squared theta, d theta. Then we're going to make a substitution. Let u be equal to sine of theta. du is then cos of theta d theta, which I have present there. So that'll be the integral of 1 over u squared du. All right, now something that we're able to integrate, so that's great. So that's minus 1 over u plus c. Now we must get back 
to x, but first let's go to theta. 1 over u is equal to minus 1 over sine theta plus c. Now, what was sine theta? So let's go back to the previous page. Tan theta is x. So if I've got theta, tan is x over 1. The hypotenuse is then 1 root of 1 plus x squared. So sine theta is opposite of hypotenuse. So 1 over sine theta is the hypotenuse over the opposite. So let's go. So that is equal to minus the hypotenuse is 1 over x. 1 plus x squared over x plus c. So it's all back into terms of x. So even though this integral started out to be looking very messy with this trig substitution, we got it to simplify and look, to, look like something that we are able to integrate. Now in the next video, we're going to look at how to do one with a sec substitution. And like I said, that one has some conditions on. So it's a little bit more work to look at the sec case. But we'll look at that one and some additional examples.